Eyes are the reflection of the soul. So <laughs> this video has no point, uh, just so you know, but so is life. Half Life 2. I replayed it, and for some reason, this feature of NPCs making eye contact to you really stuck out to me. But why? For years, video game characters looked either that way or that way. Like, bitch, I'm right here! Sonic knows I'm here, though. In fact, a lot of games featured idle animations where player character is looking at the player. Even Harry Potter had that, and I'm glad to see that they continue in this tradition with Hogwarts Legacy. But all of this is more of a fourth wall break, and not characters making eye contact with your character. In fact, these chests in Hogwarts Legacy fit more into games with eye contact subcategory, although it starting to sound more like a fetish, if I'm being honest. You promised Santa eye contact. These eyes are so alive when they track you, and so dead when you steal coins from them. Like, really, really dead. Like, did I just kill them? I need to know the lore of those. I think we can all agree that Half-Life 2 was the first game to feature authentic eye contact. So much so that when I think of Alex, I never think of just Alex. I think of her looking at me while I am holding a cactus. My goodness, Gordon Freeman. It really is you, isn't it? In the fresh. It was so mind-blowing to me during first playthrough, I played around with it like it was some sort of optical illusion. Like, you know, that dragon printout that constantly looks at you wherever you go? Yeah, it felt like magic. And it still holds up unbelievably well. Oh, I know that look. That's the look of wisdom right there. You've seen things. In fact, to me it's more unbelievable that for so many years after Half-Life 2 came out, we still got games where I'm standing over here and NPC goes way over there, like what, what, way, what, what are you doing? Half-Life Alex, on the other hand, has a cool feature where unlike other characters who look at your dominant eye, G-Man is looking into both of your eyes at the same time. It gives him extra otherworldliness. This is why his right eye is looking weird in gameplay recordings. And this is also something that might be completely and utterly false, because my source is a single YouTube comment that I read two years ago and wasn't able to verify it myself since because I am still drawing dicks in the opening chapter. Another game that had intense eye contact from a female character who followed you around is Bioshock Infinite. And here the scene that pops in my head is the ending, where we start strongly with this intense stare, and then all other Elizabeths pop into the scene having the same look in their eyes, and it all culminates in this final frame. Unforgettable imagery. But what about some men? Dishonored comes to mind. Samuel being a reflection of your choices, having real hatred in his eyes by the end of the game if you lead the path of death, or having a more compassionate look if you were more merciful towards your enemies. Piero. Well, you, you can't really see his pupils behind those glasses, but still you get the sense that there is some real fucking degenerate hiding behind those. But for me, the one who takes the crown is Trevor Pendleton. Whoa, whoa, whoa too close, too close. Especially if you kill both of his brothers, making him a crippling alcoholic. I don't know if it's just an overall style of the game, or maybe it's, maybe it's because of his big forehead, but something about his glance just makes it unforgettable to me. One glance that became unforgettable for everyone is of course the ghost stare from Modern Warfare 2 Remake, but it feels wrong to include it here, because this picture is from a moment outside of gameplay. 2D portraits also kind of a different category, but it just feels weird to not at least mention Monica, also that moment from Metal Gear Solid 1 comes to mind, and also that girl from Need for Speed Underground 2. Like, I don't remember this story for Need for Speed Underground 2, but I do remember that girl, you know? Mario 64. Sounds like it was the first 3D game for many, so I should include the start menu, where eyes are following a cursor and look straight at the player. But again, it's more of a fourth wall break category. But what if I told you that 3D Mario actually had a lunatic brother? The scientist from Crazy Machines. Here you are playing as his apprentice, so technically it isn't a fourth wall break. And the way he looks at you. Usually I can handle two, maybe three direct eye contacts before I go into the settings and turn him off completely. Something else that looks like a fourth wall break but isn't one is of course the ending of Ezio Journey in Assassin's Creed 2. This one truly just chucks you when it happens, and such a good use of someone turning their head and looking directly at the camera. One game studio actually managed to mimify this exact trick, with its most notorious showcase being Oblivion. Every time someone speaks to you in that game, the camera makes this ridiculous zoom in and locks into NPC's eyes. This is funny of course, but for me it's a lot funnier 
here when characters are looking at you when they contextually shouldn't. For example, they just drink tea and look at you <laughs> non-stop. Or even funnier is when they're having a long dialogue with some other NPC and they just keep looking at you. Even if you're not a participant whatsoever. One game where you can be a participant is Facade. And the looks NPCs give you in that game are truly Oscar worthy. But did you know that Facade is actually a sequel to a point and click Peter Pan video game where the eye contact is only exaggerated by the fact that the characters can't even turn away from you. Okay, back to the good eye contact. Far Cry 3. And I'm sure when I say Far Cry 3 and eye contact in the same sentence, we all think of the same scene in our heads. The sex scene. But I want to turn your attention to a different moment. In the prologue, we have some great moments with Vaz, of course, but also Grant. From him looking at you when untying the ropes to dying at your hands. The animation is fantastic and enough to motivate you for the rest of the game. But the moment that stuck in my head isn't this one, it's a little bit later when you wake up and meet Dennis, who appears to show you compassion, but in such a weird situation, the first thing that comes to character's mind is how can he protect himself? And then this happens. Such a great moment. I have no idea why I dislike Far Cry 5 eye contact so much. I mean during cutscenes, because every character looks at you so intensely, it's, it's like they are penetrating my skull. And you can say it is intentional due to the whole them being in a cult thing. And uh, maybe you're right, but it just feels so cringe to me for some reason. It's all right during gameplay though, but no character ever is talking about anything important during gameplay anyway. So you end up not paying attention. Actually, come to think of it, yeah, I think I literally just realized why Half-Life 2's eye contact mechanic feels so distinct from other video games. I think it's a combination of characters not only telling you important stuff during gameplay, but also the fact that they and you interact with environment while speaking to each other. I mean, <laughs> NPCs speak to you, you are silent because, yeah, Gordon Freeman is silent, whatever. Sometimes I dream about cheese. I don't know. I can understand why most games transition into a cutscene every time direct eye contact is needed, even if it de-emphasizes the whole effect to me. First of all, if developers are good, cutscenes are skippable. And second of all, it lowers the chance that during important story bits, player will end up more invested in some fucking plant they're holding. In Half-Life 2, a piece of technology that was really hard, but turned out to be super valuable, was modeling how people's eyes actually work when they're looking at you. Eyes are not spheres, so when your eye is rotating, the highlights, the glints on your eye, are, are gonna move differently than if you model them as spheres. Turns out you have part of your brain that's hardwired to know where somebody's looking. Even though somebody's in the second row, they can tell that I'm looking at somebody in the third row. Spending a bunch of time to make the characters aware of where you were in space, and that they're looking right correctly at that person, it turns out that people suddenly say, oh, these characters are nicer. These characters are more like me. These characters are smarter, right? So something uh, as seemingly irrelevant to a game as making eyes look work right turns out to uh, generate the sense that this game is more fun. 